Hey, since my last video, I just want to give you a quick update and let you know that the 14-gallon uh, drum that I'm using for crack key passive hydroponic method that I am resetting it and we're going to do a new test. So this is a food safe plastic, 14 gallons in all. It was used for former uses with uh, transporting liquid sugar. This has a lid that normally has a locking mechanism on it. Uh, looks a little rough at the moment, but what I did, this is the normal color. I'll try to get that a little bit closer to you. I used a fusion paint and uh, spray painted that. I have found indoors and outdoors that after a while that even the uh, plastic type of spray paints tend to wear off. Now that uh, amazing looking uh, grid pattern in the center is actually a net cup. 3.75 inches. I drew a center line through this and this is a 3.5 hole saw that I used to put that hole right in the middle of the plastic. And that just drops right down in there just like that. So the drum that I'm using, I just want to give you a quick piece of information. If you are looking to do cracky hydroponics and you're looking to do this outdoors, sure, scale up to like 44, 60 gallons, whatever it might take for the fill once and forget for the season. But at the end of the season, even if you have not used all those nutrients, one of the things that you could do is you could just push the containers over and dump remaining nutrients out onto your lawn and that'll green up things for sure because lawns tend to love those trace elements and stuff like that. If you are doing this indoors and you don't have a strong back, you're older, younger, smaller, you may not want to go up to 60 gallons indoors because uh, it becomes progressively more difficult to do things. Indoors, I could use a flat lid like this and don't have to worry about it. Outdoors, I would be using something that would have more of a domed, almost like trash can uh, shape to it. And the reason for that is because when rain comes down, you don't want the rain to pull up. You see the uh, outside edges are a little bit higher. Pull up inside here, run over and run down into the nut cup area because what that will do is it's going to drown the uh, air roots that are growing in the container because over time what happens is the roots as I showed you before, start to separate in functionality from the ones who do gas exchange and the ones who are picking up the nutrients and the food. What I had to do was, I had about 20% of the nutrients left in this, is I just picked it up and I took it to a kitchenette area, lifted it and dumped it. Then I had to take a uh, 3.5 gallon bucket, uh, free promo there, ha ha. I put soap and water inside this, used a um, bristle brush on the end of a plastic rod and uh, cleaned out the inside of that. A little water at a time with soap and then I dumped that back into the uh, sink so I can get this nice and clean for the next go around. And uh, once I put it in place, I did make sure that it was directly centered underneath the uh, grow light up above because once these get full at over uh, eight pounds, you know, between eight and nine pounds uh, per gallon, they become uh, difficult to move around. So you do want to make sure that you have your crack key drum in its final destination. I started carrying water from the sink and filling up the uh, drum. And what I used this time, I'm going to test a different nutrient. This is the uh, Arrow Garden nutrients. And the Arrow Garden nutrients, unlike the Dynagro 9-3-6 that I used last time, may perform a little bit differently. And I wanted to find that out. It is the same uh, concentration that you use for passive hydroponics. And that is uh, approximately 1.5 teaspoons per gallon. And this uh, measuring cup that you find at a typical convenience store for kitchen use is uh, very nice for being able to measure out those nutrients and dump those in. What you might want to do is when you get about uh, Oh, first bucket, second bucket into this is add those nutrients and then every additional bucket of water that you put in is going to help churn and mix those up. Former grow that I had here, just a couple quick tips. Droppings off the plant, I had to vacuum up. 
This is a cordless vacuum that is rechargeable. This is probably one of the handiest things that I've had in terms of uh, grow accessories. You may want to pick one up for yourself because the last thing you want to do is to be picking things up from hand or maybe getting a full-size vacuum to run if you're growing indoors. Let's go ahead and set this lid down for now. One of the other things that uh, I would suggest is like antibacterial wipes. I use those on the chrome of my light stand in the base and along the baseboard of the wall where it has a uh, rubberized uh, baseboard strip just to help keep things clean. The cleaner you keep your grow area, the better off you're going to be. What I would like to do is tell you that put this lid over to the side when you're filling up with water, but when you get a little bit closer to the top, go ahead and set this on here because towards the end, what you wanna do is make sure that the water comes up to about that far on that net cup. That way, you can pour the final amounts of water directly with the net cup down slowly because you do not want to splash that up onto uh, walls or carpet and things like that. But what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take another clone. You remember the first time we used a clone. We're going to take another clone from the same plant and put that into here. The last clone that we put in took about 111 days and we were hoping to get about uh, two pounds of tomatoes off that. We actually got pretty much uh, dead on the money with that in terms of right around four to uh, six gallons of nutrient for each pound of fruit that we were growing. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the clone and what we're going to be putting into this food safe container. These units are not cracky units. These actually have a small pump inside that recirculates nutrient. And the total size of the reservoir and the, where the plants are growing is actually closer to about a half gallon. So you know, with this type of hydroponics, you have to take the lid off and top off the nutrient water as it gets lower which is one of the benefits of crack behind our products in that uh, you do not have to mess around with uh, refilling the container because the fill once, just once, and forget is exactly that. There's no pumps running, no aeration, it's quiet. It's very nice for indoors, small apartments, bedrooms, and places that you don't want noise. And on another quick note, the plant that you see above these uh, clone plants, and these are uh, first generation, uh, these two tomato plants are the AeroGarden Golden Harvest Microdorf tomatoes. They have golden tomatoes on them. And this uh, mother plant is currently at uh, 225 days old. Now, if you grow in an area with a short summer, that is quite a bit longer than what you would normally grow. And the plants continue to put out uh, blooms and tomatoes, and it keeps the kitchen full of tomatoes as needed. But the uh, ones that are down in these two areas that I had cloned are only growing under, believe it or not, a 10 watt LED light, whereas the mother plants are under a 40 watt LED light. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer one of the two clones over to the cracky barrel. I'm going to pick up the uh, top deck of one of the plants, probably the uh, larger one. This one was cloned from a cutting on June 3rd. It is currently August 17th, so it's been in here for a little bit. And that's what it looks like. It's a very compact plant. Roots are healthy. Uh, there's not much room to grow in a half gallon bowl. Uh, I did not use any of the typical uh, baskets, just a neoprene clone collar. The challenge is going to be to compress these roots to get them up through the hole that is on the deck. It's one of the challenges. If you are cloning plants, you don't want to get them uh, too large before you uh, remove them from 
the unit that you're cloning in, you can tell that uh, it's a challenge. There's a lot of roots. So I'm going to squeeze, push, squeeze, push, and try to get as many of those roots through as I can. I'm being a little bit harsh in terms of the amount of pressure that I'm putting on. There's the hole size, there's the uh, roots. This is the uh, clone collar. We can take that off right now. It, all it does is it goes around the cutting and you close it up and it keeps the plant, the cutting from uh, slipping too far through that deck that I was showing you just a second ago. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take that uh, net pot that I had in the middle of the lid on that drum, try to fit the uh, roots all into it. I think that's not too bad. You can always trim off a little bit of the canopy or the roots, you know, if you need to. Now, you notice how the plant flops around a little bit inside the net cup. Uh, that's the purpose of the grow media with uh, crack key units. I'm just gonna take a handful of material. It really doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's heavy enough to help stabilize the plant. You could use gravel. I've used recycled rubber and other uh, products. Before you say, oh, well, that's not food safe. Keep in mind that all you're doing with this is trying to keep the plant from flopping over so that it doesn't uh, fall out of the net cup onto the floor as it grows larger. So we'll just keep squishing that down. Try to keep the stem of the plant in the middle. Probably another little handful around the plant. I'm doing this over a trash can. If you're growing indoors, it's always a little bit of a challenge in terms of keeping your grow environment clean. Gosh, you couldn't ask for better. Let's get this closer so that you can see. Uh, the roots have all been squished down in here. The plant itself is looking great. I'll try to pinch off a couple of these lower branches. There, you can see where I put the grow media on top to help stabilize the plant. And yes, this does have tomatoes. I picked off the ripe tomatoes. It does have some green tomatoes as well as uh, some blossoms that are on it. And it's time to drop this into that uh, food safe drum. Kick on that grow light. Some people have asked, grow lights, what do you need? Well, if you buy a grow light, you'll find out that a lot of times on a manufacturer's website, they'll have the PPFD or PAR values and things of that nature. But if you get one that has a PPFD that reads about 500 to 700 over a two foot by two foot area, that would be ideal for a plant like this. This microdwarf tomato, like the last one, grows about uh, 24 to 30 inches in diameter, and that will give it near outdoor uh, summer conditions. One of the ways you can compensate if you happen to have a little bit uh, less wattage on a grow light is to run it a little bit longer. Now, a lot of plants do need a dark cycle. Try to find a grow light that will give you the amount of light that you need and I'll try to do that in a different video and try to achieve that anywhere from a 12 to 18 hour grow cycle with a little bit of darkness each day. That should be enough to uh, get you up and going and enjoy fresh vegetables over a long period of time. Last grow went 111 days. We'll see how long this grow does. Here's what the mature fruits look like and they have a uh, sweetness and a little bit of tart. And they are uh, best when you pick them when they are closest to being fully ripe. So don't pick them uh, before that. But you'll notice that I have quite a few of these. All of these were formerly green and they were picked off the plant that I showed you last time on my video. I'll put a quick link to that.